It's been a while, but I'm here. Hey, this is Scott White and Giveaway. a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. And in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. So I got a request from someone in the community, and the request was to share my background of how I started in photography and the early gear that I had way back in the day. So we're going to dive into this with a little story time. So here's my story. Growing up, my grandfather was always taking pictures of me, my brothers, my family. He'd come to games, he'd come to events, my music performances, whatever it was. Yes, I was a musician before I was a photographer. I still play, but growing up, I actually played clarinet in middle school and in high school. And I actually got into Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts because of the clarinet. And then when I got there, I actually switched to bass guitar, but that's how I got in. My major at Berklee College of Music was music recording. I wanted to be a recording engineer and actually own a music recording studio and record bands and whoever, and then that's what I wanted to do for a living, basically, right? So it turned out that music recording requires heavy experience, knowledge, expertise in music theory. I cannot stand music theory. I can't. It just drives me bonkers. So I was in college. I decided I'm going to transfer back home and I'm going to figure some I'm going to you know figure something out find a school that has a music recording degree and go there. Transfer back home, found a county college that actually offered music recording as a degree and turns out has one of the best music recording programs in the whole state. I did that for another year or so and turned out that they also required a lot of music theory but they didn't require it until we got later on the program, so I found out the hard way that uh, I was wasting time. <laughs> so then after talking with friends and family, I decided to switch to photography. Now this goes back to my grandfather always photographing me and my family when we were younger. Now when I was in high school and I was offered photography as one of the classes, I took photography for multiple years and my grandfather actually gave me my biological father's camera. It's this old Fuji. This is the camera. It has a light meter sitting on the hot shoe. Uh, it has a, what is this, 50? 50, 50, a 55 millimeter lens on it. Um, it's got the rapid winder on here. And yes, it's on a tri little tabletop tripod. I have my father's, my, my biological father's camera and my grandfather's camera, which you'll see in a second, both sort of just on display on a shelf. I don't use them. This one wound up having a light leak. So every photograph I ever made with this had a light leak. I didn't want to have it repaired. I just wanted to have it as it was when he had it. So that's, that's what I have right now, right? So this was my biological father's camera. This was my first ever real camera. <laughs> first real camera. So I had this Fuji camera that was my biological father's that my grandfather gave me. And that's what I used basically in high school. And that's what I used when I was photographing bands, uh, when I went to sh see shows and stuff like that. Yes, during all this time, I was still playing in bands, going to see bands, doing all the music, all that music stuff, and having a blast. And I was photographing a lot of bands every chance I could get. And, and then fast forward to when I was unhappy with music recording as my degree, I talked to friends and family and I decided to switch to photography. It turned out that the same college I was going to, this county college, the one that had one of the best music recording programs also had one of the best photography programs in the state. This school had a black and white darkroom. It had a color darkroom, mind you for negatives and for prints. It had a digital lab with a whole bunch of Mac Pros. At the time, these were like the, even before the cheese grater Mac Pros. <laughs> this is a long time ago. And uh, you're know, talking Photoshop on this, everything, right? This is also pretty Lightroom. And it also had enough Hasselblads for every student to rent, basically to have for the whole semester, for each semester. And it had enough large format cameras that you can partner up with one at least one person and rent it 
whenever you need to or for projects and things like that. This school was fantastic in the photography programs. Now, of course, it meant that I had to do photography theory, but unlike music theory, I really enjoyed photography theory. So I'm doing this photography program and enjoying every single part of it. And there was a point where I needed to transition into digital. This was, when I was in college, is right when digital was becoming the big thing, that you need to be digital. Now the school was still forcing us to learn film and film photography, including large format photography. It was amazing, I loved it. I loved that I had to learn that. I feel like that made me a better photographer because I had to understand how everything works. So I convinced my mother to help me get my first digital camera, my first like digital camera that I could actually uh, control the camera. It was not a DSLR. <laughs> it was not a DSLR. This guy, this, this is the Olympus, oh man, I think it's C4040, Olympus C4040. This thing would actually allow me to manually control the camera. There's no like dials for, ma for aperture and stuff, but there was buttons that I could control it with. And it had this um, sort of lens adapter that I could actually put on filters or whatever I want. It had an f1.4, uh, 1.8 lens. It had zoom, it had flash. Um, there was even an attachment that I can, ins I can hook up a external flash. I had that. It, and it took, oh, there's a PC port. <laughs> there's a PC port, that's what it is. And um, it actually takes smart disk cards which, mind you, were vulnerable to x-ray machines. The way I found out that smart disk cards were vulnerable to x-ray machines was because I went on a trip to the Grand Canyon and I photographed a lot of pictures. I did a whole photo project there of rock formations that look like animals. I get back <laughs> and that card is completely wiped out. I didn't format it. My friend that I was with at the time did not format it. It was the x-ray machine. I had the C4040 and eventually we started doing full studio work. This is when I started learning about studio stuff and I started apprenticing for two photographers that were local to where I lived at the time and they were both portrait photographers and they were amazing and they were both Canon photographers and I felt like I needed something more than what this little Olympus technically a point and shoot could do for me. Now this point and shoot was $1,100 at the time. Now you can get a point and shoot like that for under $100. I said to my mom, I need to upgrade. I need to get a DSLR camera, one that allows me to change lenses, allows me to do more that will be faster and higher resolution and things like that. And at the time, now mind you, I had Nikon lenses because my grandfather gave me some lenses and he told me go Nikon. <laughs> so Nikon's in my blood. And um, at the time, the camera that was the best to get was the Kodak uh, 14N, something like that. It was a DSLR camera made by Kodak that used a Nikon mount. They also had a Canon mount version and they had a Fuji mount version. It allowed you to use any of your lenses from those manufacturers, depending on which model you got, on this Kodak body. It used a compact flash card and was 14 megapixels, which was amazing at the time had all the bells and whistles that a DSLR would have, but was extremely slow still. Now, I don't have that camera anymore. I do have the box. <laughs> I don't have the camera anymore. That was my first DSLR. Now, a few year, a few months maybe later, Nikon came out with the D100, which, <laughs> which would have been way better. <laughs> this Kodak camera was complete junk, sadly, but it was my, start into into the the world of DSLR. It was so bad that even the sensor, you could see this the lines in the, the grid and the sensor in the photos. It was so bad. It was so bad. Yeah, you'd think that the company who invented the sensor used in cameras would make good sensors. They didn't, but whatever. So the Kodak C14N or whatever it was called, DCS 14N, something like that, was, was my first DSLR camera and then eventually I sort of downgraded because that camera was like six thousand dollars at the time my parents literally used the rest of my college money to pay for that camera and then county's college I actually got a student loan to finish paying for college after that um, now 
the next camera I got was technically a downgrade, but also an upgrade because downgrade as far as it was like a more of a consumer level camera than a professional level, level camera. The Nikon D70 was my next camera. And you would think that's a downgrade, but really it was an upgrade because the Nikon D70 was way faster, better resolution than this Kodak that cost me $6,000 at the time. So I'm working with these two photographers and I'm their assistant, setting up lights, helping get everything together, you know, carrying things. And I had a blast. I learned so much from them. And then I got a job offer um, to be a photo assistant uh, for a forensic photography company, a company who gets hired by attorneys to photograph either a crime scene or an accident or some sort of document or anything like that that has to be certified for legal purposes. So I was doing that for a while. And then as I was finishing up college, I got hired by a camera store that was in my hometown. And this camera store also has a repair service and, and as part of that is a warranty company. They're a very large warranty company. And I worked there for six years. I was allowed to take on photo jobs and take days off to do photo jobs. I would do it on weekends, whatever, at night. And I'd build up my portfolio while also having access to borrow or rent or buy quality equipment. And slowly I would upgrade what I had because I had the ability to get employee discounts on stuff or borrow or rent, depending on what it is, I would be able to do that. So I built up my portfolio by using what I had available to me from my employer and also by assisting and um, getting gigs from referrals where, wherever I could. And at the same time, still playing in a band, still touring when I can, and still photographing bands, which also helped me get bands in my portfolio for like press photos and things like that. So I used what was available to me from all aspects of my life in order to build on my portfolio. Again, while also slowly upgrading the camera I had, slowly but surely as I could, from this crappy Olympus, to this crappy Kodak, to then a Nikon D70, to then a, I think I even went to the D700, D800. Uh, I even had a D1 at the time, or a D2 for a little bit, because I wanted the pro body, and then I realized I like the smaller bodies better than I like the big clunky bodies. Hence why I'm now using a mirrorless Nikon Z. 7.2 is what I'm filming on right now. I use an Nikon Z6 and Z7.2 right, right now as my main cameras. Lighting wise, I have bounced back and forth between a bunch. There was a time where I had eight Nikon SB800s that I would use as individual lights or sort of combine them into a, gr a group of light through a softbox or something like that. Um, I have gone to strobes, I've gone to tungsten, I've gone to LEDs. I've got a little bit of everything but again, I've upgraded from low, low quality ones to better ones over the years. Now my go-to is basically the Godox um, 8600 Pros are my main lights. And then I have small strobes as fills. I've got a bunch of different LED lights. I mainly use that for headshots and for video, um, but I've got those available to me as well. So one thing I forgot to mention is that along the way, my grandfather gave me his Nikon F when he decided to go digital and actually got the Nikon uh, D750, I believe it was. And so when he went digital, uh, I inherited his Nikon F and, and all the lenses and the flashes he had and all, all the equipment that he had for film days when he transitioned to digital. I don't use it. It does have film in it. It does work but uh, I, I don't use it because I cherish it too much and I don't want to risk doing anything to it. So with that said, thank you for asking this question. Thank you for listening and listening to my story, uh, my journey. If you have any questions, if you need help with your story, with your journey, if you want to know more, dig into more about equipment or 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 anything my how I got from from <laughs> doing band photography to now doing proposal photography whatever it is if you have any questions for me please comment please send me an email I'd be happy to make more content for you answering those questions 
So in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.